everyone, welcome back to another quick video. This time we're talking about landmine belt squats. Landmine belt squats are one of the least expensive and most accessible options for belt squats in the home gym. Why? Because most people already own a barbell and a landmine. And if you don't have a landmine, they're pretty easy to build. They're even easier to buy. Just make sure yours is bolted down. Bumper post style landmines won't work for this. Next thing you need is a belt. I use a spud ink belt tucked into the Abmat belt squat cover. The spud ink belt is decent on its own, but gets kind of uncomfortable under heavy weights. Adding the belt squat cover just makes it feel like marshmallows around my waist. If you want a great all-in-one option, I highly recommend the Henny Attachment Hip Belt. It has nice, thick, comfortable padding and multiple loops to accommodate people of all sizes. There are plenty of ways to connect the belt to the barbell. The easiest way is to just wrap chains around the bar. I'm personally not a fan of chain wrapped around knurling. You can use a product like U-Clips. For the longest time, I was using this T-Bar Row Collar. It worked okay, but it pulled me forward during belt squats. Ideally, you want the connection point to be directly under you. I talked about this with Jim Pin, and we basically came up with a design that combined their D-Handle Bar with their landmine attachment. The result is a collar that gives multiple attachment points, so it works for belt squats, T-bar rows, and everything in between. Once you have these, you can start belt squatting directly on the ground. I'd recommend using smaller plates like 25s to give yourself room to squat deep. You can add some elevation with bumper plates, or plyo boxes, or blocks, whatever, and it'll help get the full range of motion. I like to use my T-bar row platform. One of the challenges is getting into position. This is sort of a running theme with all DIY belt squat designs. You don't want the chain to be long or it limits range of motion. You can connect and then step up, but that can be challenging. You can get in position and then connect, but many people aren't flexible enough to pull this off. I tried hanging chains from the ceiling. That works and it gives you something to hang on to. However, chains in a dingy basement gives off serial killer vibes. I tried adding a post to the platform and that worked a little bit better. I also tried a spring-loaded post that moved when the bar was lifted, but I didn't love how it whacked my leg every time. A better option for people with a power rack is to use a rack-attached landmine and then use a J-cup to set the bar height. I actually really like this version. It's pretty simple to set up and it works like a charm. Of course, I'm using my rogue lever arms with the Vendetta attachment and mutant metal handles to hold on to for stability. One of the major issues with this type of belt squat and all lever arm belt squats is the curve you experience through the movement. Not the resistance curve, but the path of the connection point. It's basically a semicircle and is closest at the top of the movement and farthest at the bottom of the movement. The shorter the arm is, the more you feel the bottom of the curve. The barbell landmine is one of the better options because of the length of the barbell. Brian Hennessy, famous ex-NFL player and inventor of the Squatmax MD and Henny attachment, reached out and he shared his solution for this. If you anchor the end of the barbell in a Henny attachment strap instead of a landmine, that end will move throughout the movement and eliminate the curve. Of course, there are other ways to accomplish this. You basically just need one end of the barbell suspended and able to move freely. And that's it for landmine belt squats. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out, bro.